New updates are so great until we don't know how to use them or they're not relevant to us. So if you haven't heard, Canva has just released a heck of a ton of new updates, which is really, really exciting. But for everyday business owners, which is who I work with as a graphic designer, I love teaching them how they can use Canva for their business. You don't need all of them. And so I've gone through and I've worked out what ones are going to be relevant for you, which ones are going to change the game for you, going to save you so much time, going to save you so many headaches and frustration. I'm going to actually just make designing a little bit more fun for you. So I'm going to go through the top up dates now, plus a couple of bonus ones that I think are still a little bit fun while slightly less relevant for you. Um, so let's get into it. So if you don't know me, my name is Jackie Norton and I am a graphic designer and coach that help business owners how they can make their own graphics or in standout branding their own business graphics that transform their business into looking really professional and drawing in their ideal client and making the money that they want to be making. So I'm going to teach you now a couple of the things that I've loved about the new updates with Canva. Now, these updates are still even rolling out on my platform. So there's two of them I can't even show you, but I'm going to tell you about them as much as I can. Um, and there are some really, really great ones for you. So I'm going to go through the really basic ones first and then some of the really cool AI things that have been released that are going to save you a lot of time in your business. So this first one here, I've just got up a random design that I've had in the past because I wanted to show you a brand new feature around layers. Now, this is something that business owners have had access to if they've got something like Photoshop. But for those of you who have used Canva, it's been really fiddly. For example, if I've got, say, this balloon here and I want to move it around layers, I can press position and I could have pressed forward or backwards and all these different things. But that was the extent of it. Whereas now you might see this extra little tab. There's a layers tab here that is a game changer. This layers tab will show you every single layer within your design. And all you need to do to move it around is click it. So if I grab this bubble here and drag it up to where I want it to go and boom, it's there and it's so much easier to grab, use and move around. Um, you can even just go to the overlapping section. So if there's one, one, one section, like I just need to find the overlapping parts, you can click here and you can see these are the different sections that overlap each other and lower it down a little bit if you've got way too many layers going on. So that is one of my favorites because that's going to be such a time saver and such a headache saver. I know that so many of my students come to me like, Jackie, I just can't find this graphic. It's lo lost behind everything else. This is a great way and a great workaround for that. The next thing I want to show you is gradients. This is incredible because usually the workaround, I would say, if you wanted to have, if you had a plain design like this and you wanted to bring it up a notch, make it have a bit more depth to it, I would usually say go to elements, find, find a blur feature, um, find, find a blur element and pop it all in and kind of create some depth. Now you can do that right within your colors. So I'm just going to click on this background color here. You can do this with any element that you're changing the color of and go to uh, colors here. And I can click, if I hover over my color, you can see that there's a little like a filter button or a, a little levels button. If I click on that, you're going to see there's a solid color so I can go around and do my normal features of picking colors. Or there's this gradient feature where I can change the gradients of the design. I can do um, straight, diagonal, radial, all these different things. And I can edit the colors of that. So for me, I love doing just slightly darker and lighter tones of the same color for a really subtle gradient. So I'm going to click on this one and I'm going to change it to being one of my other branding colors. Um, so I'm actually just going to grab this. Um, eyedropper tool here and actually just go down to this purple here um, and you can see that it's it's really really subtle so I'm going to make it a bit darker just for your reference but I love using the subtle looks it creates so much depth without and looking professional without being like overwhelming and too obvious and taking away from your design um, I'm going to make this a bit darker just for your reference um, so you can really see what's going on so you can see here that this gradient has now made it lighter in the middle and darker on the outside if this is in the wrong order you can move it around and change it like that or if you want multiple colors you can even do that like say I wanted to add in a blue Say so I then wanted to add in a pink, like anything is possible here with these gradients, which is so, so exciting and such a time saver. So that's going to be one of my favorite ones to use on the regular. The next one I want to show you is an incredible AI feature. So if you've been keeping up to date with all the AI updates in the world at the moment, it's pretty incredible what can be done now. And at the moment, I'm using ChatGPT a lot of my business to kind of help me to draft content, to get content ideas, to help me refine my content. But now that's all within Canva in anywhere. You, Canva used to have it inside their Canva doc section, but now it's in any design. So if I am just in a social media template here, I can press this little Canva magic kind of assist over here. And if I press this, you can see there's a magic right button here. If yours isn't here, just kind of search it up here and it hopefully will pop up. Press magic right. And what I can actually do is, is literally say, write me five um, tips for um, keeping plants alive. If I write that down, Canva is going to generate that for me. I'm going to pop in five different tips here. But say I'm like, oh, that's a little bit too long. 
this one here is so, so helpful because I, I've been talking to a lot of my students recently and they're designing flyers or posters and they've got just a little bit too much text and it's getting, and they, don't, they don't know how to shorten it down. What you can do is select any paragraph of text, whether it's an AI written one or something that you've written yourself. And so all you need to do is click on whatever text box you have and go down to this Canva Assistant again and press summarize text. You can see this is, these are, most of these are going to be pro features. So if you haven't updated to pro yet, this might be the time to do so. Um, I do have an affiliate link down the bottom if you are interested and would like to use my link. Um, I'd be very grateful, but there's obviously no pressure to do so. Anyway, back to this. Press summarize text. And what it's going to do is do its magic. And you see here, it just summarized it into a couple of sentences rather than a couple of par paragraph or two, just like that. And so you can do the same thing. If you want to expand something, you can expand this text into something that's a little bit longer. It'll kind of ad lib and do its, do, like, look at that. It gave me like, 18 different tips. Got a little bit stuck here on six and eight, but that's a pretty good effort. Um, or what we can do here is rewrite it. So if it needs to be a little bit different, we can do that as well. And so there's so many different options for how we can use AI directly inside Canva to do things. And so, as I said, like this is a great way to do it. Or like my favorite option is literally just to grab some text that you've already got. If you've got a flyer that's got the paragraphs that are too long, just press summarize and it can do half the work for you. Obviously read over it, check that it's all okay, but um, this can hopefully save you a lot of time and bring you a lot of clarity into this piece. The next two I wanna show you are photo editing ones. And so you might've seen this if you've been inside Canva in the past few days, but pretty much if you go to, you click on a photo and you press edit photo, you'll see there's alongside background mover, there's now two new ones. You've got magic eraser and magic edit. So let's try it now. I've got the magic eraser and what I'm going to do is pretty much brush over parts of the image that I want to disappear. This, I need to put this caveat in here. This isn't a really, really great tool yet. I think it's still getting built and still getting better, um, but it's okay for a couple of really basic things. Like if there were some birds in the sky was the example can be used. I'm actually going to use it for this clump of cutlery and um, condiments back here in the kitchen behind me. So I'm going to paint over it. Make sure you don't lift up your mouse at any point point in this time, it needs to be all in one kind of click and one drag. So I've dragged over that and now I'm going to wait for it to do its work. This is going to take a few moments so make sure you're patient with this. But in essence, it's not going to do a perfect job. But for me, this part of the image was distracting and I wanted to take it away and the taking away of it should hopefully do a better job than what it was there. Um, but for example, I've also tried to remove the strawberry. It didn't do a great job of doing that. So make sure you're not trying to do anything super intricate with a super difficult background for Canva to use. But you can see here that's done a wonderful job. Um, and it's gone it's not taking away attention from me in the part of the graphic anymore the next thing you can use is magic edit and this one's really fun um for business owners i'm not sure when you're probably going to use it but what i can probably say is if you've got some images that just aren't quite perfect have a go at maybe fixing them. So if you press magic edit, what you can do is pretty much like we did before, we can paint over part of an image, but instead of removing it, we can replace it. We can tell the AI to create anything we want it to make. So for example, I'm gonna paint over this strawberry here like so. And then once I've done that, it's going to prompt me to press continue if I'm happy with where I've painted. And I'm going to type in here what I want it to be replaced with. So I have a quite a, um, a whimsical brand. And so I'm going to actually write in here a miniature zebra because I love zebras. <laughs> going to write miniature zebra. So I'm going to press generate. So this will take a few moments again, but you just got to wait and then it'll prompt you with a few different options of what you can replace it with. So for me, last time I tried this, I didn't like all the options, but one of them was actually really spot on and I loved giving it a go. So I'm going to see what it comes up with this time. <laughs> that one's a bit funky. Um, hopefully some of these other ones are better. Oh, this one here. Look how cool this is. It almost looks like it's drinking out of my strawberry. So if I click on this one, you'll see it's got this original one here first. It's popped it in here. If I click on this one, it will replace it with this one here. And now it looks like there's a little zebra just sitting on my bench with me. I'm going to press done. And now I've got this new super cute image. And so you can use this for far more normal things than me. Um, but in essence, even if you wanted to replace, I'm sure like you could replace the strawberry with a different fruit or like a watermelon or something. The next one that I haven't got yet is the layout feature. So technically very soon, hopefully you can keep on checking on this inside this design panel in between templates and styles there's going to be a layout section this one is so incredible so if you're struggling with a layout so for example this is quite an ugly design there's not really good balance this is far too close to the bottom um, this is too close to me that this hierarchy isn't great what i believe that it's going to do is if you click on this design and press layouts it's going to the ai is going to generate alternative layout options for you that are designed well it's going to think through 
better things like the alignment and the balance and all those different things. And it will give you some options. So um, hopefully that's going to come really, really soon. And I might do a video on that. I'll definitely post about it when it comes onto my Instagram. So if you're not already following there, please head over to White Deer GD and you can see that as soon as it pops up. But in essence, keep an eye out for the layout feature because I'm so excited for this one, especially for just everyday people trying to use Canva, frustrated that they can't get the design right. And they can just click this layout feature and see the design transformed. The next one I want to show you is Canva Draw. Now this has been around for a little while, but in its beta mode and it's not been that great, but it's now been fixed and it's so, so wonderful. So if you go down, if you can't see it here, but I think it's pretty much been popped here for everyone. So for me, it's on this left-hand panel, you click on draw and it pops up with this little thing down the side here. And you can use any of these drawing tools to draw. So for me, I love this one here. Um, and what you can do is click on it, and then what you can actually do is hover over this line section and click on that and you can change the thickness of your lines. You can go like 36 thickness, which is quite thick, or you can go um, anywhere between that. You can just manually adjust that to whatever you want. So I'm going to choose this one here for the sake of ease. Obviously going to change the color. I'm going to do that to white um, and then you can pretty much draw. So if I just go, what I like to do and what I think is so, so fun is just kind of doing like doodles over a design. Um, if you're graphic style is quite whimsical and playful and scrapbooky, then this is going to be your best friend. Like you can just do a little squiggle down the side here. You could do, that was a really bad squiggle, squiggle up the top here. <laughs> Um, you can do like, for me, I like doing like little like boop, 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 or like pretend like I'm kind of drawing over the image. Like this is just so, so cool. The slower you draw, just for reference, the thicker the line will be and a bit more, um, like this is a little bit wobbly. It's not perfect, um, but you can kind of see the kind of the quicker you go, the more beautiful the line is, to be honest with you. Um, and you can even actually pick these up. So if I actually can actually just pick these up, move them around, scale them as needed, which is so great. These kind of become my own elements. I can even go up here and edit their color. I can even put my gradient into it. You know, like there's so many things I can do here. Um, so these pretty much become your own little elements that you can change, move around um, and edit as kind of needed. So you've obviously got these other features as well, like the more highlighter one, the more thinner pen one. Um, so have a play with that. Canva has also said, which I haven't worked out yet. I'm going to try it now. Their example was that if you draw a star, it would be actually become a proper star. So I think that's a feature I haven't got around yet, or it hasn't quite been released yet, but in essence, keep an eye out for that too, and use that if you're wanting to. But in essence, but for me, I think it's actually just easier to search for a star. You can either go to elements or you can use Canvas thing over here and press star. Not that hard to type it. And it just pops in a star there for you. So have a play with that enjoy that feature because it's so, so fun. It's really playful. If you're a little bit more creative, then have a play with this one. Enjoy this feature. All right. The next one I want to show you is the brand hub. So Canva has always had the brand kit, but they've kind of stepped it up a notch. This is particularly useful for bigger corporations, but I still think this is really important for just small business owners. I'm going to show you the parts of it that I think are really, really important. So if you go to your home here, you'll see the brand hub here. So if I just get out of this for a second, um, you'll see your home and there's this brand hub option. Again, a Canva pro feature. If you click on this, you can um, access to your brand kit, your brand templates and your brand controls. I'm just going to go, I'll go into brand kit at the end because that's where I want to really hang out. But you can kind of also add brand templates. So if you have like a social media template for a quote and a social media template for a testimonial and a flyer template or a business card template, you can add them in here to really access them really quickly um, and really on brand. You can also add brand controls here. So if you've got team working for you, you can restrict the colors that they can access. You can restrict the fonts they can access. You can even ask for a design approval. But for those of us who don't have teams, you can actually just go into brand kit. I've got mine here. And if you click on this, you can add in your brand logos. You've always been able to do that. You can add in your brand colors. You've also always been able to do that. And you can add in your brand fonts. What's changed here is the array of fonts. Usually you can only add in three and you can see here, my three have auto populated to here, here and here, but I can now re-add in a title, subtitle, section header, body, quote, caption. There are so many more options for you to add text in. <clears throat> now don't get overwhelmed that you have to pick a different font for all of these. I teach my students that three fonts max for your designs is really helpful. You might choose to do a larger version of your heading for the title. You might choose to do a medium version for the subtitle, excuse me. <clears throat> and you might choose to do um, different kind of sizing, different kind of like play with the sizing and the capitals or lowercase or bold or thin for these rather than adding in new fonts. Um, you don't have to add in heaps and heaps of new fonts. Um, there's also sections now to add in your brand photos, your brand graphics and your brand icons. These are incredible because you can add in all of your brand photos. I previously have had these stored in folders, which is a wonderful solution. So if you see down here, I've got my photo shoot photos and they're just sitting all in here for me to access as I need. I'll show you where you can access them now. So you can add those in and you can also add in your brand graphics, your brand elements. So I'll, my brand elements are always stored in this folder here. So I just click on this 
you can see here, I have a list of all my different brand elements. So I'm now going to go through and add those into this graphics section to be easier accessible. You can also upload brand icons in here too, which is wonderful. And so once you're inside Canva, the way that you access your brand kit um, is by going up to the top here and pressing brand hub. And you'll see here that you can have your templates listed here. You've got your logos here. You've got your colors here. You've also got your fonts as your, your heading subheading, which will also be accessible via the um, font section here. And you can see um, you've got my brand fonts are listed down here. Um, and then you've also got, if I go back to brand hub, the photos are all here and the graphics are all here. So everything's kind of sitting there ready for you to use, ready for you to access. Um, you don't have to think about it. You don't have to look twice. It's all just there. I want to show you this colors one really quickly. So if I click on a design I've already created, if you're not happy with the colors, but you've got your brand colors all sorted, what you can actually do is have the design open and click on shuffle. You'll see here, it just slowly, slightly tweaks my colors into something different and I can just keep pressing shuffle until I'm happy with it. And I just think that's such a fun way to kind of cycle through your brand colors um, and try a different design if, if something's not working for you. Um, and then finally, I want to show you a bit of a fun one. This isn't really that necessary and I haven't found a way to use this, but if you've, the time that you would use this, if you've been looking on Canva elements and you're trying to find like a photo that perfectly suits exactly what you're after and you're like, I can't find a perfect photo, say I want um, to use use sunflowers um, with tulips tulip and you just can't find the right picture that you're after you can use this text to image to generate it so I'm going to go to apps here and you'll see it's up here text to image now this has also been around for a little bit longer but it's improving improving all the time um, so if I actually go in here I'm going to type in I've already given myself a prompt modern flower collage using sunflowers and tulips. I can then choose the style. Do I want filmic or dreamlike or watercolor or all these different options? I think there's even more. There's so many options here for me. I'm going to press, I'm going to do one that I haven't done before. So I'm going to go for 3D model. I think that'd be fun. You can also choose if you want a square image, a landscape image or a portrait image. So I'm going to press create your image. Again, this is going to take a little bit because it's creating an image from scratch, but I think you're going to be pretty astounded at the result that it creates. How cool is this? Look at this and what has it created. I flip and love all of these. So if I insert this image, like it's got, um, that's a poor excuse for a tulip, but good try, I guess. Um, this one here is probably more accurate to a tulip of here, but like this is just what it can create with you can just pop, pop in a prompt. So imagine all the things that you could pop in here. Um, have a go, have a play and see what it comes up with for you. Another feature that you may or may not want to use is the animate feature and gee whiz, I love this one. So for me, I love doing a couple of little videos, particularly because um, video is becoming more and more popular, particularly on Instagram, TikTok, everywhere. Um, and so if you want to add a little bit more interest to your designs, Canva has always allowed you to edit the, oh, the whole animation. So I can just do something like, what's a fun one that I love? Party. And it just pops it all in, does cool things like that. But I'm going to remove all of those because what I want to show you is a brand new feature that I think is so, so fun. So for me, I have a little brand mascot, this little dude here. Her name is Mulberry Duffel. Dapple fluff. I keep forgetting to be honest. I'm still getting to know her, but you'll see when I click on her as an element, there's a create animation option. So I click on this. What I can actually do is grab her and move her around and it will animate it to move that way. So I'm going to grab her. I'm going to pretend she's jumping on the laptop and I want to jumping over to my text like so and watch, look, she's jumping around. How cool is this? You have options now to speed her up. You have options to smooth it out, to steady it out, to orient element to a path, all these different things. And so I'm going to press done. And now I've got this cute little moving animation. If I just move the timer back to the start, that took me so, so quick. Like this is just next level being able to create this so quickly in such a program like Canva. So those are the updates that I wanted to share with you. There are plenty more. So feel free to go and watch the Canva create um, like the, the video they kind of did, like it was like an hour long kind of conference and they give you all the updates in there, but just keep an eye out on your Canva, play around with these, experiment with what's available to you and learn to embrace these changes to help your business to be creating graphics even faster, more beautifully and more professionally for your business. So I hope you enjoyed that one. If you've got any questions, feel free to hit me up in the comments. Um, but also if you're one of my students inside DIY Design My Biz or the Co-Creation Club, I'm hoping to go into these in more and more detail. And if you've obviously got heaps of questions in there, post them in there and I'll give you some full tutorials on how to use these in more depth. If you aren't in my world at all yet, please join me on um, Instagram at whitedeardd. Hit that subscribe button. I've got plenty more coming out for you very, very soon. Thanks for joining me.